Hello everyone and welcome to my booktube channel. It's the new year 2016, which means that 2015 is over and that I have completed my reading year. Which is why I'm going to have a little recap of the year 2015 in books. In total I've read 51 books, which means that I almost read one book a week, which I find pretty cool. I would have liked to fit in a 25th book, but I had a busy vacation, so I didn't quite make that goal. But my Goodreads reading challenge was 40 books and I definitely surpassed that. On to the books I've read in 2015. I'm going to do this chronologically. The first book I've read in 2015 was... City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. As you can see, this is a Dutch version, and that can also happen a few times, but don't pay attention to that. Just, you recognize this cover, don't you? So that's enough. City of Bones is a very famous book that is being turned into a series after the movies kind of flopped a few years back. And it's about this girl who discovers that she's a shadow hunter and I can't say anything more. I liked this book, but I wasn't particularly fond of it, so I gave it only 3 out of 5 stars, which is still pretty good. The second book I read in 2015 is quite obviously City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare, the second book in the Mortal Instruments series which follows the City of Bones. I'm not that fond of Cassandra Clare's books, but I thought I'd give it another try and I picked up the other series she has written, which is kind of in the same world and it is Clockwork Angel. This is the Infernal Devices series, which is pretty good. Actually, I like this a lot better. I give it 4 out of 5 stars since it's quite mysterious and cool and it's set in London uh, in the 19th century, 18th century, I don't remember. It's It was the beginning of 2015 and my memory is honestly not that good. The next book I read in 2015 was The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Schwalski. I don't own this book, which I regret terribly, um, but I lent this book from a friend of mine and I enjoyed it immensely. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars and it's definitely the kind of contemporary you want to read when you're feeling like this deep kind of mood. The next book I read was one for school, which I also enjoyed, and that is The Destroyers by Hilda von der Meter, which I can translate into English as The Spectators. This is a thriller and it's pretty good, which is why I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. The sixth book I read in the year of 2015 is quite a strange book and I kind of regret saying that I read it, but since it was this kind of big hype, I felt like I was obligated to at least try. And I finished a book and it turns out that it's the biggest book I've read in 2015, which is kind of too bad. Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James and as you can see this is again the Dutch edition. Um, I gave this 2 out of 5 stars because yeah, read the book. The seventh book I read was Once Again for School and I enjoyed reading this immensely and that is All Mal Below the Himmel by Els Beerton, which you can translate into English as We All Won't Heaven. This book is about the second world war and it's super touching so if you want to read a good book about the world war you should definitely pick this one up. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. The 8th book I read in 2015 was Hexhall by Rachel Hawkins. This is such a fun fantasy read, which you can definitely read in one sitting just as I did. It's really thin and really easy, so just pick it up if you want to have a good laugh and want to have this really good, happy fantasy book. Then once again for school we needed to read a book about the First World War, which I did and I chose Valentine Joe by Rebecca Stevens. I thought this book was a bit too childish, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. It was a really quick, fun book, but it was also really touching at the ending because, yeah, it was it's about First World War and then books can get touching. Only as I am recapitulating my reading year, I noticed how many books we had to read for school. Because the next book I'm going to show you is also one for school, for French. And that is El Stapelicera by Tatiana de Rosny. I don't know if I have pronounced that name right or wrong, but I don't think it matters. The next book I read was Paper Aeroplanes by Donald Porter. This is a really fun contemporary read about two different girls who befriend and notice that they are not so different after all. 
Um, this is really good, but the only thing that really bothers me is that there's a sequel to this novel. It's not a standalone, which it should have been because the ending is perfect. I didn't need the sequel and I gave up on reading that one after I've read, I'd read 60 pages because I didn't like it. So that's too bad, I guess. The next book I read was a reread. I'd already read this book about 30 times, which is not exaggerated. And that book is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. Harry Potter is my all-time favorite series in the whole goddamn wild world. Because Harry Potter is utter perfection. That's all I have to say about this. The next book, once again a book I had to read for school, was Stone Cold by Robert Swindles, which is a really, really, really thin book. It has only like 132 pages, which is really not that big. And it's it's a quite good book, I think. Red Queen by Victoria Aviar. This book was really fun to read, but as some people have already said, it looked a lot like other fantasy books I had already read. But still, I found some of the plot to be surprising and fun, which is why I gave it 4 out of 5 stars because I simply enjoyed reading this book and that is all I can ask for. Off to the next book, and by the way, if you've noticed that the screen or the spot that I'm filming in isn't exactly the same as before in the video, that's because I wanted to put in the charger and I pushed the iPad a bit and that's why. Sorry for the inconvenience, but again, back to the books. The summer of 2015 was also the summer in which I discovered the amazingly talented author who has a place in my heart, which is Rainbow Rowell, since I read Eleanor and Park as my first Rainbow Rowell book. This is such a cute novel and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars because it's just so quirky and so cute and so heart-wrenching at times and the ending is just perfect. Pick it up. The next book I read in 2015 was The Rosie Project by Grimey Sincian. I'm currently lending this out to someone, which is why I can't show you the actual book, but I'm going to show you this in the upper corner. Pretty, isn't it? The next book I read was Paper Towns by John Green. I heard that this was going to be turned into a movie and I wanted to have read the book before seeing that one, so I rushed to the bookstore and bought this one. Or actually I ordered it online, but same story, same story. And then I read it and I enjoyed it, I guess, but it wasn't my favorite John Green book. It's kind of boring at times, which isn't why I read. And that's why I only gave it three out of five stars. And the movie wasn't that good either, if we're being honest. The next book I read was Together with another book, my favorite book of 2015. That honor goes to Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. This book is like perfection. It describes me and all the readers in this world so goddamn well that I can't even tell you about it. It's so perfect. It's about this girl who's got a twin and suddenly her twin sister wants to separate a bit. Um, and she has to go to college on her own and there she meets her roommate who's kind of badass and she can't handle that and she meets this guy Levi who's super sweet and it's about her writing fanfiction about this series who's kind of like Harry Potter I'm just saying and it's like perfection yeah it's even better than Eleanor and Park if you ask me and I gave five out of five stars to Eleanor and Park which means that this is like a six out of five stars think about it the next book I read was the sequel to Hex Hole written by Rachel Hawkins and that is Demon Gloss also obviously by Rachel Hawkins. Uh, so this was a sequel of Hex Hole and also a book that I read in one sitting because it's such a quick and fun read and that's just Rachel Hawkins writing style I guess. The next book I read was Wonder and by reading that I also read the Julian chapter which is a small book that is included in this special edition novel. Wonder is this really wonderful read about being different and being accepted by your peers and it's really great, you should pick it up. And the Julian chapter is just a bonus book, which is also really fun. The 22nd book I read was The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. This was a fantasy standalone novel, which isn't something that you come across that often. Um, in most of the cases, fantasy is in a trilogy or a series, which was why this was kind of a nice change. The next book I read was if I Stay by Gail Foreman. As you know, this book has also been turned into a movie because this is like the movie edition. Uh, and I wanted to read this book because of that reason. I don't watch the movies before having read the book and I couldn't live with myself otherwise. And I really wanted to see this movie. So I read the book and it was good. Gave it four out of five stars. It was satisfying. Then I read 
Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, the first book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. This was the first Percy Jackson book I ever read and I can tell you that I really enjoyed it and I'm definitely going to continue on with this series. The next book I read in the month of August was... Anna and the French Kiss, a book I'd heard a lot of great things about. It's written by Stephanie Perkins and she writes these kind of girly contemporary books which are really nice and I enjoyed this although I thought that Anna was really stupid. I mean she didn't really know that much which was kind of irritating and she was also naive but it was nonetheless really cute and the love story was also really cute which is why it's just a cute book. And if you like those books, you should pick it up. The next book I read wasn't that cute. It was a really serious book, but nonetheless really good. A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Husseini. This is the Dutch edition once again. Uh, this is a really serious book about two women who live in Afghanistan and have to marry this old guy and they be friends even though they are married to the same guy and sometimes are a little bit jealous because yeah, He's got two wives and we read about the awful conditions in Afghanistan and how women are mistreated and it's really touching and just hard to read. The next two books I read in 2015 were Obsidian and Onyx. I'm telling you about these two books at the same time because this is a bind up of these two books. Um, this was a really fun fantasy series and I really, really enjoyed it. Jennifer L. Armentrout can just grab you and never let you go until you finish the books and that's why you should keep reading and never stop. Although these covers are horrible. <laughs> the next two books I read were Opal and Origin, also by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Um, yeah, this is just the sequel. <laughs> And then finally I read Opposition and Shadows, the final books in the Lux Chronicles, also two books. Then I read another very famous fantasy novel, which is Throne of Glass, written by Sarah J Maas. This is an incredibly loved book on the booktuber community. And yeah, it's about this assassin, Selena, and it's really badass. And I enjoyed it. I gave it five out of five stars and I definitely get what the hype is all about. This is the last book I read in the summer holidays, and that is Will Grayson Will Grayson by John Green and David Leverton. This is a really great book about two boys with the same name. The next book I read was the first book I read in the school year. It's a book I learned from my friend, and that was Me and Earl and a Dying Girl. Um, it's about a girl who's got cancer, but it's not just like The Fault in Our Stars. Less dramatic, but also just as beautiful. The next book was the first book I had to read for school, The Laatkomer by Dimitri Verhulst, um, which is like the latecomer, which I already translated in a previous video. It's about a man who fakes dementia. The next book I read was a really fun one, Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella. Sophie Kinsella is famous for writing funny books and I can now say that that is absolutely true. She's so funny. This is such a funny book that I couldn't stop laughing through this entire book. And I definitely recommend it if you are looking for a lighthearted read. The next book I read was Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. This book was also amazing. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars since it was so perfect. It's a really fun contemporary book about a girl and her best friend and how her best friend suddenly disappears and she has this list she has to complete before the end of the summer. The next book I read was again one for school and that was Nad Meerdelbeke by Stefan Hertmans. Um, this was a really difficult book to read because the vocabulary and the sentences used in this book are really difficult to understand sometimes because it was sometimes a bit too figuratively if you ask me, but it was nonetheless a really good book and I enjoyed it. The next book I read was To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. This is a really cute novel about a girl who always writes letters to the boy she loves to move on. She writes all of her feelings down and then she just moves on, she's over it. But one day all these letters are sent out to those people and she's in deep trouble. The next book I read was kind of a guilty pleasure book and that was Perfect Chemistry by Simone El Kalilis. This is basically just a cliche story about the bad boy who's in a gang and the good girl who gets straight A's. Then they fall in love and they discover that opposites do attract. The next book I read was 
Life and Death, Twilight Reimagined. This is Twilight written all over again, but this time Edward is a girl and he's called, or she is called, Edith, which is really funny because that's my name too. And the girl Bella is now called Beaufort and is now a boy. It's really funny to read because it's, you've got this and you've got Twilight in your head and now the story completely changes by changing the genders and that's really funny. Then once again I read a book for French class and that was L'Enfant de Noé by Eric Emmanuel Schmidt. And this is once again a book about the Second World War and the Jews. The next book is Together with Fangirl, the book I showed you earlier. My favorite book of the year 2015. Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. So my two favorite books of 2015 were both written by Rainbow Rowell, which means that I have probably found a new favorite author. Yeah alongside J.K. Rowling, obviously. So this book is about Simon and Bass, two boys or wizards, who attend Watford School of Magics. Um, it's a really cool book and I can tell you that the magic in this one is awesome. You can cast a spell by saying a commonly used phrase. For example, um, it's raining cats and dogs outside and then it will start raining because it's such a commonly used phrase that yeah, the sentence holds power. Get it? It's really awesome. Just read the book. Next, I read a book for Dutch class, which was The Golden Drupal by Michel Tournier. I can translate that into The Golden Drop. I'm not really sure what to make of this book yet. <laughs> Next, I read Sweet Evil by Wendy Higgins. This was also kind of a guilty pleasure book because this is also a bad boy and this is also a good girl. But this time there's magic involved and that makes it even more exciting because demons and angels are always like super cool, aren't they? The next book I read was a book I read for my oral exam of French and that was El Dorado by Laurent Godet. This book is about the people who used to live in the third world countries but are trying to get to Europe in these unsafe boats in which they sometimes die um, and we all know that this isn't completely fiction because there are a lot of people who die because of this way of transporting. The fourth to last book I read in 2015 was The Selection by Kira Kass. This series is really 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 fun. <laughs> it's about a girl America who gets chosen out of thousands of girls to compete in this game the selection for the hand of prince maxon and yeah it's really fun and it's got three parts because it's a trilogy and guess what the next two books i read were the elite and the one the sequels to the selection and then the last book i read in 2015 was the bad boy in glasses which is a book i read on what part which is an ebook app um, it was the last book I read in 2015 and I read it because I was kind of in a reading slump and I read it an easy, quick read um, to complete my 2015-52 books challenge but I didn't reach my goal because that was the last book I read and I had planned to read another one which is kind of too bad but The Bad Boy in Glasses was also really fun to read but not really that high quality <laughs> I guess you can say that 2015 was an amazing reading year for me and I can only hope that 2016 will be equally great or maybe even better. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or leave a comment down below if you think I should know what your reaction to this video was. I will see you next time in a hopefully fun video. Bye!